Welcome to Talking Giants Player Profiles and Projections. And today we have a very interesting player. Guard, left guard, Shane Lemieux, six foot four, three hundred ten pounds, twenty-four years old. Was a four year starter at Oregon, fifth round pick, a fifth round pick that we liked in Shane Lemieux. I think some of the issue with Shane Lemieux is he got kind of got thrown in there pretty quickly. Because he entered the starting lineup after Will Hernandez got COVID. Then he started the net, the rest of the, the season as rookie. So he started nine games, which was good experience for him. But it's kind of interesting. If they were to keep Zeitler, I think the Lemieux-Hernandez conversation would be super interesting. Because I was very clear. Like, like I believe fully that Will Hernandez was better. But apparently, you know, Will Hernandez was coming off of COVID. And he's talked about how it affected him. But regardless, he is the starting left guard. Like, he's, you know, had a little baby injury in the, in the start of, of camp. But he's back, and he is the starting left guard. And I don't know whether to be excited for the growth that he can make or worried about him being embarrassed at times as a pass protector. I mean, the Giants had options in this year and, you know, a little bit of free agency even kind of right now during camp. And also, especially during the NFL draft, they had their opportunities to make an upgrade. But clearly, and this is not even with Shane Lemieux, this is just their guys in general. These are their guys, and they believe in these guys to, to develop. Um, now, the Giants have been stuck in spots in years past that we have been just waiting for guys to develop and hoping that guys can take the step up. But I, you know, I at least think that Lemieux put something on tape last year, especially him as a run blocker, and hopefully, you know, uh, learning how to pass block and being at least an average pass blocker in the NFL it's a little bit easier to do at guard versus tackle. You know, where we've been largely, we've been waiting for the left tackle or the right tackle to take a step up in pass blocking, which is a little bit more tougher to do because you're out there on an island where versus Lemieux, you're not actually out there on an island as an interior offensive lineman. So they believe in him. They had opportunities to upgrade. They believe in this guy, and, you know, we're rocking and rolling with them. Yeah, we'll, we'll finish off with his run blocking because his run blocking is a really, like, it's a positive. Um, But the pass blocking, and there's ways for him to be, I don't think he's ever going to be a great pass blocker, but to him to be, you know, like a a good enough pass blocker. But through numbers, gave up five sacks. I think there was one more that first Tampa game. I don't know if they credited him with a sack. He he missed the blitz. At the time, I thought it was the running back. Six QB hits and 25 pressures. I mean, in half a season from the guard spot, that those are like really, like he was flat out bad in pass protection. There's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But... There's ways that he can get better. So he's got short arms. Like I think in his com in the 2020 combine for offensive lineman, he had like the fifth shortest arms, like 31 and a half inches or 31 and a quarter. I should have written that down. What I think ways he can do, and I think Rob Sale and what Dave DiGuglielmo installed a little bit more with some more slide protection, where you are like if you do make a mistake, you or if they you know if they start outside, move inside, you have someone there to help protect, even though you are playing a man in today's slide protection. But I think for him is the way a lot of good players have to play a guy like Aaron Donald. Bring the contact to him. Instead of letting him come back and sitting back, like he doesn't like I, I think he's gonna get embarrassed that way. That's the way he gets swims and you know, like he would have one like train wreck rep a week. Like not just got beat, like train wreck rep where he just got totally like swam and you know, Daniel Jones or whoever the QB was at the time was running from his life from the snap uh, go. If he can get Guys, and get into them quick. And he's got the he's got athletic enough feet. We've seen it as a run blocker that he's athletic enough. He's got athletic enough feet that if you're ready to that, to bring the contact, but have your feet ready for them to you know try and swim inside. I think that's his path to become a better path. I know we're getting I'm getting like nearly O line stuff, but that is his path to being an okay pass blocker. Again, I don't think he's ever going to be. Kevin Zeitler as a pass blocker. But he can be a better run blocker than Kevin Zeitler, and he can be a good enough pass blocker. And that's why we liked him so much. I mean, we loved him as a fifth-round pick. The issue is that he got thrown in right away, and you can watch the film breakdown I did before that Bucks game of him, and it was the exact issues he had at Oregon. He would have those bad reps where he'd get swam, he'd get embarrassed, but as a run blocker, he can do everything you ask him to. Yeah, and it's, you know, at least this is my brain and how my brain works the issues that maybe Will Hernandez had his rookie year, maybe sometimes in certain areas it's the same as Shane Lemieux, where really it's adjusting to the speed of the game, where if you're getting beat by you know swims and if you're getting beat by those quick kind of pass-rushing moves and the quickness of guys, 
adjusting to the speed of the game is you know probably the largest adjustment for any player in the NFL. Guys are just so much bigger, they're so much stronger. And frankly, you know, it's kind of surprising to see and to hear that Lemieux's weakness is initiating contact in pass blocking because he is you know a lot kind of that of, was scheme and, and that's something like the like Nick Gates has talked about in pressers is like they have these guys on island so they were you know like guards were setting backwards instead of bringing the contact and you can get yourself in trouble doing that at times but I do think it's something that Shane Lemieux should like involve in his game more yeah because Lemieux like we t- I typically think of Lemieux as a tough guy you know, he's a hard hitter, hard nose kind of player. You know, we call him nasty Nick Gates, but you know, you can also be called nasty as well in the way that he plays. I mean, the highlight worthy play that you know, the first play you watch the Auburn game from from 2019 or yeah, from 2019, the first play of that Auburn game, he puts a defensive lineman into your defensive lineman on his ass, and it's an awesome. Yeah, thing. you have violent hands, so, yeah, so that's, that's I think how he can get better as a yeah. pass blocker with those violent hands. Yep, yeah. as a run blocker, like he was good as a run blocker from day one. Um, First, where you can see that he's better than Will Hernandez as a run blocker is as a puller. He's just more athletic. Now, I think Will Hernandez is a good puller, too. Like, I think, you know, if you look at analytics, like run block win rate, which we're not big fans of, but like no. Will Hernandez is, like, the top of that. Um, I think Will Hernandez is a victim of his expectations, which is fair. Um, but he's a good run blocker, and he's athletic enough to make those pulls. He understands, like, hand and hat placement to get inside of guys. Like, he... There was very few times where like Shane Lemieux had a pulling play and you weren't impressed with it. Um, where I think Will Hernandez might leave some of those reps where it's like I wasn't, you know, that wasn't done the correct way, or he didn't get there fast enough to where, you know, even even though he landed the right spot, it wasn't fast enough. Uh, and then you know the, he works double teams with you know, Andrew Thomas. Part of that's Andrew Thomas being such a good run blocker. But I mean, they would just move dudes off the ball like it'd be highlight worthy place from the offensive line those two working together and also his single like his single uh block one-on-ones he handled those well and with Shane Lemieux there's some reps you know every o lines game but like there wasn't there wasn't embarrassing plays as like a one-on-one blocker in, in the run game for Shane Lemieux where other guys there is yeah I said this with Nick Gates PPP as well but the Giants they ran up slash the middle guard at the sixth highest Right in the National Football League last year, and they were the twelfth most efficient rushing offense when running up the middle and guard. And the Mew is ultimately a part of that. And you know the Giants' rushing offense was at times uh, one of the the best parts of the Giants' offense and the most consistent. Um, Bobby, was that I- I'm trying to think back to a big play. Daniel Jones' 30-something yard rushing touchdown um, did that not go through Shane Lemieux's gap and Shane Lemieux's hole um, against Philly the home game? You know that went through Andrew, you know Andrew Thomas and Shane Lemieux's side. That's that's where they went through. And hopefully, knowing that Saquon Barkley is a much better runner to the right side, he's much more efficient. You know I, I'm still trying to figure out why is because you're carrying the ball in your right hand and you're stiff arming with your left. Is it because it's your dominant side, et cetera, et cetera? So hopefully. That could be a little bit more even now, now that you have a very strong duo of Thomas and Lemieux on that left side and even can get some outside zone stuff working, uh, so et cetera, et cetera. Expectations. Do you expect Lemieux to be a bad pass blocker again? Not as bad as last year. Um, I, I think that's very tough to be. But what do you think <laughs> the talking point from, like, Giants fan base as a whole will be about Shane Lemieux when the year's end? Was like, wow, he really improved? Or it's like... You know, we got to probably get someone in here who isn't giving up four or five sacks in a season. Because, I mean, he gave up five sacks in nine games. Yeah. Five sacks from the guard spot in 16 games yeah. is really bad. I think it also has a lot, a lot to do with Andrew Thomas. If we're looking at this offensive line and Andrew Thomas is kind of the train that is directing how this group goes and Andrew Thomas doesn't take a huge step up, then Shane Lemieux, I think, is also going to falter because of that as well. Because I don't think Shane Lemieux is—I don't think Shane Lemieux is ever going to be a plus, a plus, plus pass blocker, kind of like you said, Bobby. So if Andrew Thomas is in a, still in a tough spot, and I think I think Shane Lemieux is still going to be in a tough spot too. But we're looking at possibly the left side of the line, maybe not up, maybe not changing Andrew Thomas. You can't do that. But you know, Shane Lemieux looking at him, saying, you know, we're we're not happy with that guard spot. Yeah, I think that's what Shane Lemieux's goal, in a sense, for should be by the end of the season is to make yourself good enough to where they're not talking about replacing you. Yeah. If, if they want to look at someone in the draft, make it make it be Will Hern- Like, that should be Shane and the Muse goals. Like, they're not trying. They're not working to replace yeah. me. You know, where if, if they draft someone in the third round, I still feel comfortable about my spot. I yeah. think that's kind of 
Now that's a that's a weird goal for a player, but like that's my goal for like how I talk about him at the end of the season. It also comes down to Will Hernandez too. You know Shane Lemieux's future because if Will Hernandez, you know, this is Will Hernandez, he's going to be going on to his uh, his fifth year. So and he's not a first round pick, so he has four years. You know Barkley has that fifth year option. So this is it for Hernandez. You know he's a free agent uh, this upcoming off season. So. Are we going to be at a point where the Giants need to re-sign Will Hernandez because, hey, Lemieux is kind of iffy and we need to replace and upgrade that left guard position in the draft slash free agency anyway? Or can we afford to let an interior offensive lineman walk in Will Hernandez even if he has a decent year because we have Shane Lemieux? You know, what right. what kind of spot are we, are we, are we going to be in? Right. Anything else on Lemieux? No. You know, root, root for the guys in blue and... Honestly, you know, you're a little bit more uneasy about Matt Parrott. I'm a little bit more uneasy about Lemieux, just based off of what we what we saw last year and knowing how pass blocking is so important and working on the left side with Andrew Thomas. And he, he's a fan favorite. And, you know, immediately we started to win some football games when he started to come in and started to come in and start. The offense looked a little yeah, bit people better. People gave Andrew Thomas just getting better credit for to Shane Lemieux. Yeah. Which, which I get, but, like, I trust me that it was... It was simply Andrew Thomas getting better you know, yeah. on his own. So, root for him, root for the guys in blue, and I would love Shane Lemieux to be this fifth-round guy that we just found and we got, and now he can be a starting guard in the National Football League, and he can be a starting and guard on the Giants. And, you know, really, you know, you, you, you've you tweeted about this in the past, too, just, you know, tweet, you know, putting out pictures of, like, this offensive line. We want this group of guys to be the group that yeah. you know we we talk about with uh, that 07, 08 group and and to bring back memories of I mean remember we talked to Rich Sorbin in his interview like he talked about he's like I gave back to back sacks on one play when I first and he didn't play immediately as a rookie yeah. like so it's not impossible of like you know I, I, with I think there's more expectations for his guys to be good quick and I think part of that's fair but like there's like I said there's a path for Shane Lemieux to where we feel really good about him at the end of this yep. year. All right, that's an episode. We'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, let's go Big Blue.